Hi there. After this lesson, you should be able to write a linear equation from a table and graph it. Before we start, remember that a linear equation is just an equation that produces a straight line once graphed. A common form of this type of equation is an equation in slope-intercept form, or the form y equals mx plus b. This is the form we will be focusing on in this lesson. Let's take a look at our first example. We will be taking a look at how to write an equation from a table. Before we write an equation, we must determine if it is a function. Otherwise, we are not concerned with an equation at this point. So let's take a look. Is every input paired with exactly one output? Yep. All right, great. Now, how do we get from each input to the corresponding output? This might take some critical thinking, but I can see that adding five to each x value will give me the corresponding y value. Therefore, my equation is y equals x plus five. We can even determine other values in the function now. For instance, if x is equal to 12, I can input 12 into my equation to see that y is equal to 17. Good job. Okay, how about this one? For this table, let's see if we can write an equation in slope-intercept form. At first glance, it looks like I might be able to multiply each x value by 4. 2 times 4 is 8, but 5 times 4 is not 14. So let's see, maybe I can just add 6. 2 plus 6 is 8, but 5 plus 6 is 11, not 14. So it seems our equation is a bit more complex. Let's see if we can first find the slope. Another term used for slope is the constant rate of change, which will be helpful to know when working with tables. It is the same as slope in that it is the change in y over the change in x. You will often encounter these delta signs in math. They mean change in in math. Anyhow, how does y change between values? It increases by 6 each time. The x values increase by 3 each time. So my constant rate of change is the change in y, or 6, over the change in x, or 3. This reduces to 2. I can plug 2 in for the slope into my equation. Lastly, I must find the y-intercept, or b. To do so, I will choose one pair of values from my table and plug them into my equation. Great, now I will just solve for b. 2 times 2 is 4. Then, subtract 4 from both sides to see that b is equal to 4. I can plug 4 in for b into my equation to see that the equation that represents this table is y equals 2x plus 4. Your turn. Can you write the equation in slope-intercept form that represents the following table of values? All right, let's take a look. At first glance, I might want to add 13, but that will not work for all other values. It seems that we have to do some computing. We can find the slope, or constant rate of change, by figuring out the change in y over the change in x. I see the x values increase by two each time, and the y values decrease by six. My constant rate of change, or slope, is negative six over two which reduces to negative 3. I can plug negative 3 into my equation for slope. To find the y-intercept, I will choose any value from my table, say 1, negative 2, and insert these values in for x and y. Lastly, we will solve for b. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add 3 to both sides to see that b is equal to 1. The equation that represents this table is y equal to negative 3x plus 1. Good. Now let's hang on to this table and graph the values. Each pair of values is considered to be an ordered pair. So take a look at the first values negative 3 and 10. This is the point 3, negative 10. The next values follow suit. We have negative 1, 4, 1, negative 2, and 3, negative 8. If I connect these points, you will see a straight line appear. The graphs of these equations we will be working with will always produce a straight line, 
So it is valuable to note, if you haven't already, that we don't just call the equations of these values equations, but linear equations. Mm -hmm.